Welcome to another episode of Speak Up, Light Up. If you are an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, or simply a person who wants to live life based on your own terms and conditions, you are investing your time right. I'm your host, Valerie Presetio. To scale your business and impact, there is a great tool calls public speaking and to bring it even to the next level there is a great opportunity to become a TEDx speaker so if you are wondering what is the behind the scenes of how to become a, a TEDx speaker what value can it bring to you as an entrepreneur this episode is for you ready to explore let's go It's a pleasure to introduce our guest today. Elaine Powell is an award-winning speaker, TEDx and public speaking coach. Over the past 12 years, Elaine has spoken at over 200 events, trained 30,000 people, delivered over 600 workshops in the art of peak performance and public speaking. She created a TEDx event in London for three years and is a speaker coach for TED TEDx Ledbrook Groove. Passionate about transformation, Elaine has delivered talks for companies such as BT, the British Army, NatWest, and the BBC in order to transform the leaders of the future. Welcome to Speak Up, Light Up. Thank you so much, Valerie. Uh, it's, it's a real pleasure to be on your uh, show and to contribute to the person listening. Well, thank you very much to you and for your time. Well, first of all, what was your path to become a public speaking coach and bring it to the next level, helping entrepreneurs to become a TEDx speakers as well as creating one of the TEDx events? Yeah, um, I feel it wasn't a conscious, oh, I want to be a public speaker. That, that wasn't in my thinking. Um, I, I'd been working with young offenders for about seven years, um, because I did a personal development course and that's where things just really shifted in my life. And, and I, I encourage anyone to, to do this. The, the thinking was if, if I have to, we have to work a third of our life, if fear wasn't there, there was no limits, what would you actually be doing with your life? And I did this personal development course called Landmark. And I, after the three days, I went away and I thought about that. And I'd been working in law, lots of money, um, but I wasn't being fulfilled. I, I just wasn't lit up inside and I knew there was something missing. So I took that time off and I sat back and something said, work with young people, you know, give back to them when they're young, have them understand who they are at a much younger age I wish that had happened to me you know I had that wisdom and my eyes were open when I was younger so I, I worked with young offenders for seven years and just like many people who are watching you know or listening to this there comes a point where something says it's not enough so mm -hmm. it was another phase of it's not enough for me and I went traveling around the world for a year and when I came back I was like okay I want to be an entrepreneur I want to be my own boss. You know, I'd been my own boss for a whole year. I said when, I said where, and it was an adventure and I wanted that for my life. And so I tried many things over the courses of two years. And then I think that's why it's really important to have conversations with people. You know, whatever your business is, talk it out because in the talking out, you either hear things you didn't hear before or someone can contribute to you. And I went to lunch with a gentleman and he told me about a charity going into schools doing public speaking. Now I joined Toastmasters, which is an amateur yeah. speaking club, really loved it. I was winning competitions. And then obviously I, I'd had a history of working with young people. So when he told me about this organ charity that I would get paid in one day, the same I got for a whole week and I would be training 15 year olds in public speaking and listen those kids are like marshmallows to me i've worked with young offenders school kids angels and so that that's how i kind of jumped into you know public speaking and then obviously it's turned into a business now wow what a journey <laughs> yeah that was like a whistle stop tour <laughs> 
Yeah, it's like tuning in to your real natural talents and like emerging from this. This is so beautiful. Well, you know, a lot of people know what TED, TEDx talk all about, the inspirational, you can learn so much from them. For some people, it can be life-changing. But if to talk about entrepreneurs, how it would contribute to the uh, business growth, for example, why do they they have to start considering public like speaking in general and particularly TEDx, how it will it add value to their business? Yeah, oh my gosh. So I feel like <clears throat> there's like two camps here. There's public speaking <clears throat> and then there's TEDx. And I feel like TEDx is like, you know, you've got public speaking here and then you've got TEDx is a whole nother level um, but let's talk about the first one, which the majority of people will hopefully embrace at some point, which is public speaking, you know, speaking publicly. Now, I, I know that they do say public speaking is in the top three fears in the world and people are like, oh, no, it's it's embarrassing. It's vulnerable. So there's lots of reasons why people will steer away from it. <clears throat> you know, when when things when you maybe <clears throat> make a mistake or things go wrong, it's very vulnerable. It's just you one here and mm -hmm. maybe 200 people watching you. And yeah. so a lot of people will go inside their heads and start panicking or having to go, oh my gosh, this person looks boring or bored or, you know, they start talking to themselves way too much and then it all becomes about them. So, you know, I get that it's, it's very scary for people, but it, it i want people to start to see it's it's a sport it's like a, a performance and anyone who who performs at a high level they've had to go through that learning curve of like tennis missing the ball getting it wrong you know losing matches but they just keep on and keep on until they become a high performer as a tennis player or a high performer as a singer or a dancer Public speaking is the same. It actually is a performance because you're performing for an audience. Now, the reason that I encourage entrepreneurs, business owners, actually everyone <laughs> who um, wants to stand out, make a difference, you have to speak up. You really do. Or else you're going to blend in and nobody's going to see you. And you have important things to share. You've been given gifts of challenges and life lessons. What are you just going to do? Keep it, keep it to yourself because you're scared. Like, no, you, the aim of public speaking is to serve the person listening so that they can go on and serve somebody else and serve somebody else. It's like a domino effect. So, I, you know, I just wanted to meet Pete, some people where they are, which is very scared and say, I get it and you're more than your fears and you're more than your circumstances and your situations just start join toastmasters because everybody who is a thought leader who's credible who's an authority who's well known speaks that's true yourself included you know we speak on podcasts and facebook lives and instagram it's not just on a stage we speak in Zoom rooms. So knowing how to clubhouse, knowing how to communicate and be comfortable with yourself. If you want your business to grow, you have to grow as well as a speaker. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people are talking about the world is changing without understanding that world, world has already been changed. <laughs> there are different rules, how you operate, but also how you do business. And as you mentioned, we, we are speaking up the social in the social media so why not to learn to do it in a better and effective way that it serves you on so many levels and it's not just about oh look at my life how I, if you want to do it it's fine but think about how like it's kind of additional income stream why not or just uh really sh talking about what you are standing for what are your values what is your business all about who you are as a brand this is a powerful there are powerful platforms that we are using daily but you're right people are doing it without awareness <laughs> and there are so many things to work on yeah so 
So that was cool. public speaking, and then we've got the next level. That's why right, I went. I like talking all things TED, hence why red. Um, you know, the TEDx. That's like another league. It's for a lot now. It's seen as the creme de la creme. It carries so much weight when you deliver a TEDx talk because one, it validates that you actually have something worth sharing. Mm -hmm. um, it very quickly. You can use it to leverage your business, who you are. So, you know, your credibility. A lot of people uh, want to speak, yes, because it's a big impact on, they've got ideas and they want other people to share those ideas. And that's how we transform problems and situations around the world because someone had an idea. Oh, what if we do this and then this comes out of it? Or, I had an idea and I actually went and did something about it and this is the results and if I can do it you can too so mm -hmm. that that's why TED is such a great place to share those ideas and just automatically you increase your visibility your credibility your authority in your industry and now what happens is in your industry maybe about I don't know this is a guess 10, 15% actually go out speaking and maybe get paid to speak. So they're in front of a lot of people. And of that 15%, maybe only about three, five have actually delivered TEDx talks. What that means is you really start to stand out above everybody else who is just doing the same old things, social media, posting, constantly posting. And they're not seeing that speaking is one to many. That means you you can share your services, your products, whatever it is, obviously not on a TED stage, but it's you speaking for an hour to two, potentially 200 or 300 of your ideal clients. It is the fastest way to cash clients. That's why all relevant authorities speak. <laughs> I'm going to keep on saying that. You, you have you want you need to learn how to speak and have and stand out for the right reason yeah well talking about this three to five percent it's actually maybe there are people who are listening to us and they are considering to become a TEDx speaker or yeah they're just like figuring out what are the criteria what are the process so maybe some insights about that and also the second question is why do some talks they actually have a multi-million viewership and some are actually you know not so popular let's say any kind of do to do things and don't do things <laughs> yeah um so th the first question so when people give two it's like oh, okay <laughs> what was the first question <laughs> again well the first question was all about uh if there are some people, like some listeners, wants to become TEDx speaker, oh, uh, what is the process? Like uh, any kind of insights, how they can be ready, and um, some behind the scenes <laughs> insights. Yeah, okay. The second one's about <clears throat> leverage and why do some, you know, get millions. And and some yeah. yeah. yeah um, I mean, I have a process, um, like a recipe, because the challenge with TED and TEDx is apart from some TEDx coaches like myself who have a process, a blueprint, there's just lots of information out there. Even when you go to the TED.com uh, website, which has lots of do this, do this, do this, it's still, there's a lot missed out. So for me, first of all, it's always about the idea. What is your idea worth spreading? It's not what is your story. It's not TED stories worth sharing, it's TED ideas worth spreading. So first and foremost, what is your idea? And that is the hardest because the idea needs to be unique, original, or it has a different spin on something that's you know out there already. And mm -hmm. this is where the challenge is because I listen to a lot of people who share their ideas and it's the difference between me going, meh. <laughs> I can Google that. I've seen it. Yes. Okay. It's not that different to, oh, ooh, yeah. Tell me, tell me more. 
that's what you want people to do is to really lean in and go, oh, I haven't heard that before, or that is so different. So first of all, you, got, you really have to come up with the idea. That is the hardest part and it takes the longest as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, obviously I had program, a year long program where I, I, we work for six months on uh, a TEDx, getting on a TEDx stage. I actually just had a client this morning, just got accepted. Uh, so I'm super, super happy. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and it's in October, which means she's only got four months to pull together her talk, which isn't a long time. She's going to have to write the talk, memorize it, and then perform it. Mm. And, and perform it means choreograph, you know, chore can I ever say that word? Choreograph the, the actual performance. Um, so there's the idea, then apply. And then the writing is happening right now with that, um, that client. So you have to write your TEDx talk. And this kind of ties into um, the, the second part of the question is why do some go to a million and some the average are like a thousand or two thousand so it's in the writing which is my third pillar so it's idea apply write performance and then leverage so they're my five pillars but to tie into that second question it's the writing of it and the performance that will distinguish if the subject matter is relevant is it now is yeah. it something that that most people can relate to or is it something that we're like uh actually i have no interest in that it's you know talking about pharmaceuticals and it doesn't really relate to me so you need to ensure that your talk relates to the, the average person listening they can relate to it so in the writing process which is my third pillar this is so important because how do you leverage to get those 1 million, 2 million views? You need to make sure your talk is the best talk ever. It's like an iPhone. It's like a piece of intellectual property. Mm -hmm. If this was average, no one would really be buying it. It's the same with your TEDx talk. If you think, and this is where I'm going to come quite hardcore. If you think just you writing your talk and you, you haven't either spoken to a professional speech writer or a, te or a coach or someone who's very credible at writing the, that type of level of talk and you think that you're going to get 1 million, 2 million views, you really need to come out of la la land. The people who get those types of views, of course they've had a coach. Of course they've had somebody. It's a performance. How could an actor have a one man show and never practice in front of somebody or a top, you know, acting coach to get feedback. So first and foremost, you know, if you are serious about this, either hire a speech writer, hire a, a, a public speaking coach mm -hmm. and make sure it's the best talk ever or else you cannot le leverage average. So that's kind of like the, the first thing is the process which is idea, apply, write the talk, perform the talk, which is a whole nother conversation, the performance <laughs> side of it, because you've got to deal with that, and then uh, leverage it afterwards. And that tied into your second question about leverage. The majority of the ones that uh, have those types of views, they were relevant, and the average person could relate to it, um, and they worked. Maybe they put, I don't know, for a seven minute talk, that's maybe about 30, 40 hours of preparation time. They put the work in. <laughs> that's yeah. why. It's like you mentioned sport. <laughs> we do perform. I never counted how many hours, but hundreds and thousands <laughs> before you actually go and make your performance. Well, as you mentioned, this is like, like writing, but also performance. It's all about creativity as well, as well, and coming up with the idea, even if something exists. I think like everything, almost everything exists already. <laughs> so coming up and looking at your idea from a completely different perspective, it also requires different type 
of uh, you know thinking. And as um, Carmen Gallo, hope I pronounced it correct, points out in his book Talk Like Dad, only through seeing your own world through a fresh lens will you be able to give your audience a new way of looking at the world. And I think it can be, it's applicable not only to like audience when you are, have this role of speaker, it can be also in your office when you are with your employees or even at home with your family members. It's all like, I think different way of living the life. And maybe you can give some, I don't know, tips, how to start practicing this level of imagination and thinking, because I think your work is very exciting. It's full of creativity and how people should start thinking out of the box, even on a daily basis. Yeah. Oh, I love that question. I actually am a creative um, by, you know, by default or growing up, you know, I used to sing, I play the classical guitar, the acoustic guitar. I was in a reggae band and I always, um, I, I went into law, but it's very detailed and that just wasn't my jam. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm very creative. And mm -hmm. so I feel the public speaking and the performance side of it brings out that create creativity in all of us because you're mm -hmm. creating a performance when you deliver it, then there's elements of creativity in the performance. Um, but then also in business, obviously, I, you know, I have a business, um, I'd say 70% of my business is my TEDx year long program, it's six months uh, uh, to get on a TEDx stage, and then six months mm -hmm. to get out speaking. So you can leverage it. Mm -hmm. um, and then 30% is me speaking on stages because I love the performance side of it. So I feel that that in our businesses, it's all creativity because we're just like, all right, let me try this. Does that work? Does that not work? Okay, that bit worked. That doesn't work. So what's missing? Oh, let me try that the next time, whether it's, you know, emails we send out or a sales page with a video on or Facebook mm -hmm. ads, you know, I do Facebook ads. Some work, some don't. I beat, I don't beat myself up. I just look, I'm always looking to how can I improve it? What? Well, let's play around with it. Think of it, like I think of life as a game. It is a game. What game do you actually want to go and play? Play big. Yeah. It's like bringing this curiosity back into your life, finally. <laughs> and not just live in this kind of frames, social frames, or your limiting limbs frames, whatever. <laughs> and just start to uh, do things in a different way. It brings so much fun and unstuck you naturally. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like it's a blank canvas. For me, every day is a blank canvas. What do I want to paint on that canvas? Like we say it in language, like you and I haven't even had a conversation about language, which I spend a lot of time speaking about, you know, um, and I just, in language, I said, was it last year? No, earlier on this year, I'm going to go to the US and raise my speaker game. And so I said it, I thought it, I said it out loud. And then I just started to, okay. You know, I knew someone in the US, she has a speaker bureau. So we're working on my sizzle reel, my show reel to make it a bit more American, a bit more lively, but it's a game. Mm. It's a scary game because now I'm going to go to the US and speak on their stages at some point. You know, we have to work out visas and all of that, but play a game and, mm. and don't be scared of, of not, of failing. Like there's, for me, there's no failure this is going to work that doesn't work okay if that doesn't work what do i do next to improve it this works is that's how people go all the way to the top because they're always working through what works what doesn't work and the things that don't work don't beat yourself up that's life mm. you are not aladdin where everything you touch turns to gold sorry it's the <laughs> learnings the lessons they're the stories we tell they're the most interesting stories when things go wrong. <laughs> so see it as a blessing. What do I need to learn to grow? So yeah, that's what I, I say about creativity, playing a game. Yeah. And yeah, you only have one life. So really just go for it. Mm. 
Well, on this beautiful note, <laughs> I, I always ask my guests at the end to envision themselves as creators. So Elaine, creator, what would you like to share with the audience? What is your message? How would you like to light them up? I feel that in, in my world, because we all see the world very differently and start to see about, be aware of what are you thinking about? Be, you know, think about what you're thinking about because your thinking is creating your whole reality of life. So it makes sense to really start thinking, does this sort of thought diminish me or other people? If it does, let it go. It's not fixed, it's, it's just, or ask yourself, does this thought expand me? And if it does, then you just create it. It's all creation in language. Um, you know, so the thing I would share with um, whoever's listening is you get to create who you are, what you want in life. Um, it's, it's there for you to like step into your greatness. I, you know, I just want to encourage you to understand or to take on a perspective. Remember, it's all just a choice, how you see life that we have everything inside of us we have greatness we have vulnerability we have power we're bold where it's who we're being so choose how do you want to be at any moment at any time and then start becoming that because we all are magnificent human beings we all are we've all got our little stuff we're dealing with but just keep on remembering who you are you are who you say you are so my i'll end with a poem one of my favorite poems your life is your garden. Your thoughts are your seeds. If your life isn't awesome, it's because you're watering the weeds, spending too much time on thoughts that don't serve you. They're not fixed. Start saying how magnificent you are. So same with you, Valerie. You are an incredible human being. Thank you for having me on your show. Well, thank you very much. And for this amazing reminder for everybody, and I, I just can resonate with this like 100%. Thank you very much for sharing insights. And I hope this episode will serve so many entrepreneurs who, entrepreneurs who are ready to go finally to the next level. So if you would like to connect with Elaine, we will leave all the links in the description box below. Please check them. And I see you in the next episode.